Good evening, soccer fans. Thanks for tuning in to Gorecast. This evening we are live at the Gushu Complex, Middle Smallwood Field, where the host Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games will be taking on CBS Strikers FC. Personally, I feel it's a must game for the Strikers. I spoke to a few players prior to the game and they felt the same thing. They have a very respectable record. Their record so far this season is five, five wins, five losses. They have 16 goals for and 16 goals against. While the Canada games have scored, have won first of all, they won five games, lost six games and tied two. They scored 16 goals while allowing 23. So they are a minus seven while CBS is at a zero. So you can see, and and the CBS team, uh, they came out to it with a rather quick start right from the opening whistle this year where they defeated the Holy Cross in the first match of the season by a score of two to one. But lately, where the games are getting more meaningful, teams are looking to make a move, and CBS are dropping back. So I feel, in order for the CBS team to look at their chances for a playoff, they definitely, they definitely, they definitely need to, uh, to have a victory here this evening. The uh, CBS team are gone to the dressing room while the Canada Games team are still working the ball around the field. I know uh, Canada Games, they're looking for, they're looking for a win as well. Knowing, knowing that, you know, they want to have a respectable record. Their goals against, which I alluded to, were uh, 23 against and 16-4. That's something I'm sure that the coaching staff are addressing and they want the team to be better defensively. Meanwhile, meanwhile folks, at 8 o'clock, the Eastern Canadian Masters uh, qualifying championship is on. That's to be played at 8 o'clock at King George V Field. This year, only two teams entered with the winner to advance to the national, national tournament which would be the Eastern Canadian Masters, which is to be hosted in Quebec. This is the best of, the Masters is the best of three series with Holy Cross and the Felians, the two teams that entered. In the opening game, Holy Cross defeated the Felians by a three to two score. So you can rest assured that that's gonna be a great game. It will be hard for me to take in both games this evening on account one is at seven in Mount Pearl and the other is at eight at King George the fifth field. So I'll hopefully someone will give me the score and so that we'll be able to catch up like it's impossible for me to do both games. Uh, anyway, right now the, I'm waiting for uh, the CBS team we're still a few minutes away. CBS again are in the dressing room while the Canada games are out on the field. I would think they're starting 11 around the field, working the ball around. So at seven, we will have uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games playing hosts. And why in Mount Pearl? Because Mount Pearl is where the Canada games play their home games. And the Canada games are getting down to near the end for the simple reason, uh, the day is uh, July the 12th. At the end of this month, there are 18 game Challenge Cup schedule. Exhibition schedule will come to an end. So you can rest assured that they're looking for a victory as much as CBS are looking for a victory. And so anyway, if CBS are, are out of the dressing room and uh, Again, we're, we are just minutes away. So anyway, thank you folks for tuning in to Gordcast live streaming for Molson Challenge Cup play from the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl 
We're the uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games, who are sponsored by uh, Jerry Jerry O'Brien Financial. Will be playing the CBS Strikers FC. So anyway, stay tuned, and we will get back to live action as we are seconds away from the opening whistle. One good thing this evening I have uh, sitting on side of me over from to my left is uh, Mr. Bernard Pike from Marystown, the man uh, that seems to be everywhere. <laughs> and uh, a young lady here, I can, I'll be using her, her assistance. She's, I uh, think it's her, her boyfriend is involved with the CBS uh, team. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'll thank for her assistance. And then we got the big guy walking up the field here, going around there, checking <laughs> out the quarters. That's uh, Damien Mastron. He's going to King George, and he's going to keep us up to tune on the score down there. I'm in the middle. Oh, he's in the middle down there. So he'll, ke he'll keep us in tune then. <laughs> so he's refereeing uh, at King George. Damien and Wilbur. Hello, Ray Beck. Hello, Leo Goss from the Telegram. Telegram, hello, Ray Beck from St. Lawrence, Newfoundland, and Labrador. You are being welcome to Gorecast, live streaming from Gushu Complex, Middle Smallwood Field in Mount Pearl, where the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games are playing hosts to the CBS Strikers. Teams are lining up over, as you can probably see, to the far end of the field, opposite end of the field. And their their uh, cleats have been checked out by the officials. They're getting onto uh, where the, the the handshake is going on before the game. That's tradition right now. Before it used to be after the game, but a lot of the times the players weren't so nice and friendly with each other after the game. So we reverted back a few years ago to the handshake, which is done at the international level as well. Prior to prior to the contest, it looks like I'm not quite sure who's in the middle here. It looks like uh, maybe uh, Tony Mullet. Yeah, it looks like Tony Mullet. Tony Mullet will be doing the middle. We have CBS in the huddle there. Beautiful evening here, beautiful evening here in Mount Pearl. Temperature must be probably in the high teens. If not, I don't think it's 20, but it's probably 18 degrees or so. Again, thank you for tuning in to Gorecast, live stream from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where the host Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games team We'll be playing the visiting CBS Strikers FC. CBS Strikers have much a much improved squad this season. They are currently at the 500 mark and they're looking forward to their goal this season is to be in the playoff come Labor Day weekend. Here we have uh, that's Mr. T Osman. Osman on the attack. Osman appears to be on the right side, or it could be uh, right midfield or right wing back. Yeah, it is in right midfield. We have Harry Carter, Mitchell Barry, David Golding. We have Felly, Emmanuel Dolo, Ryan Dunphy, Gary McEwen, well, we have uh, 
What do we have? A player down? Yeah, it's a defenseman, a defenseman down for CBS, and looks like that uh, he's been uh, out of action. And here we have less than two minutes, so that happened very, very early into play. So here we have the first victim of the contest going to the bench. Never got a number on him. I never quite saw what happened. Number 21. We'll see who number 21 is. Zach Molin. Zach Molin. Number 21. Canada Games looking to uh, push the ball around rather nice. Here we have Dunphy taking the ball, taking a few steps with the ball, and he's run in by number 15. No, I know it's not Ty Durantle, because Ty Durantle, I got 15 is listed as Ty Durantle, but I know I spoke to Ty, Ty Durantle prior to the game, and he's on the bench here this evening. Perfect audio video here. Thank you so much. Hello, Shane Moores. Beautiful evening here in Mount Pearl. In goal for CBS this evening, we have basically their number two goalie is starting this evening, Scott Budden. Darcy Bennett is their number one keeper, and I was informed that Scott Budden would be in net this evening. They are quite comfortable with both, with both goalies. Trevor Ivany, Trevor Ivany went in on a rather hard tackle against Gary McEwen. And kind of bolted over young McEwen. What's it, McEwen? Anyway, the uh, referee, the ball is right down in the corner and it's hard for me to get. Okay, here we have Dunphy. I'm going to see, am I getting it here? Dunphy and Emmanuel Dolo. Dunphy goes up. Emmanuel Dolo puts it deep inside and the ball is cleared. Here we hear Eric Madison. Eric Madison's in the top of the... Uh, the scoring race, that's the goal scores. Hey, he's newcomer with the CBS Strikers. That is, CBS are kind of, uh, it's just in a lot of the cases when the older teams, the senior players, hit the uh, Canada Games player when it comes to contact. Well, the uh, Canada Games player are an under 18 squad so you can imagine an older guy being ranging from anywhere from 21 probably to 35 and generally the, the physical element of the game in this league that they uh, usually goes to the senior challenge cup team which we, which you would expect again we have Emmanuel Dolo and Dunphy looking at the ball here we have Dunphy putting the ball in very nicely and it's been Cleared, carried away by by CBS. The ball rides right out by Nicola Nika Bochim. Some foreign names on the. Uh, and excuse me if my pronunciation is not correct. I just looking at the paper that I have. Here we have Felly been hit by by Ryan Day. Felly takes the ball back to Carter. Carter back to Caesar, Out, outside to Carew. What number we have here? Here was a nice Paul inside, but again, no one was in there for the Canada games. Here we have Day. Taking the ball and going back to his defense, back to Garland. Garland into Madison. Madison been taken the ball, been stolen away by Emmanuel Dolo. 
Dolo, Dolo goes through three fire players, but he went one step too many. Hello, Diane. Diane Welster, you are listening to Gorecast live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where the host Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games are playing the CBS Strikers FC. We have six minutes of play gone, no score. Here we have Carter. Carter moving up to the attack. No, he decides to carry the ball back. He's back to Felly. Felly is back to his center back. Uh, Mitchell Bennett. Bennett over to Caesar. On over to Goling. Right the whole width of the field, and the ball goes out of touch with a throw in, being awarded. Not quite sure the number I thought was earlier. No, it's number 10. Jacob Grant, I thought was Osman first, but it is Jacob Grant. Both of them are very tall individuals. Here the ball's been taken by CBS. CBS races in the corner where we have Carter on the defense. Nice play by Carter. But a touchback to his keeper. Back out to Burry. Burry ahead again to Carter. And it's been turned over and taken by number eight for. Oh, Josh Hanrahan is back. Good for him. I, I, I like that kid from back a few years ago. He's a uh, welcome addition to the league. Come from the Canada Games, the last Canada Games. Quality player. He moved out with like what he brings to the team as well. So that's Josh Handerhan is back with CBS Strikers. Then we have Zach Wade returning back with Holy Cross. The more quality players that we return to the league, I think is better for the league in itself. The priority this year, as we all know, is very, fairly even. Here we have Carter, nice ball back to Golding. Golding on the outside to Carew. Carew back to Golding. Back to Caesar. Caesar to Bennett. Bennett outside to Carter. Carter takes one step, two steps, and he's been brought up by Sol by Ryan Garland, who placed the ball. And he, again, a lot of turnovers I'm finding this season in midfield, particular. Philly to. Harry Carter, Carter to Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo places the ball to the outside. And he wonders if he's going to know. He carries the ball back rather than it was six defensive players back. So rather than go and take on. Here we have Philly with a beautiful ball on the inside. Okay, and it's been an offside on the play. Nice play, nice work. But the linesman had the flag up on the play. You are listening to Gordcast live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where the score is no score after 10 minutes of play between hosts, Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games and CBS Strikers FC. Number 10, we have Madison. Madison. Over to his player in the middle, and it's back to Madison. Madison is their go-to man for for their goals. Looks like it appears to be a, a corner kick. Corner kick being awarded to CBS striker, and again, it looks like Madison. Right in the corner, if you can get it. The rails are up here, and it is hard, hard in Mount Pearl. They had damage done to their broadcast boot the winter in a storm. Here we have Madison deep inside. The ball just goes over the head off. Hey, the, CBS again on the, on the attack, and the ball has been CBS with the first goal of the contest. Get a number on CBS with the first chance of the game and their first goal. And it's been, wait now, I get a number once the guy turns around. We haven't got a, okay, number, got a number on them, folks. 
Number six. Who is that? Daniel Quinn. Daniel Quinn opens the scoring for the Canada Games at the 11 minute mark. Daniel Quinn with a huge goal here for CBS. Again, CBS are vying for one of the top positions, and I feel, as far as I'm concerned, it's a crucial game for the Canada Games to beat the, or for the uh, CBS strikers to beat, defeat the Canada Games if they are going to have any chance to be in the top four come Labor Day weekend. Here we have Manuel Dolo to Philly. The ball's been turned over again. Quinn is carrying the ball. Quinn to the outside, and here we have a nice play by Mitchell Barry. Nice defensive play by Mitchell Barry. Ball's been taken by Dunphy. Beautiful ball over to Jacob Grant. Here we have Felly. Ali on the outside to Carter. Carter to Emmanuel Dolo. It was Madison turning 360, looking at the official, and the referee says, no, play on. Here we have Molin looking for the goal down the middle to Madison, but it's a long ball, and it's been taken by Canada Games goalkeeper. Too many turnovers by the Canada Games. Definitely too many turnovers. And defensively, defensively there, I feel missing young Jonathan Quirk. He's usually the partner with uh, Mitchell Barry. He's been out for quite some time. I believe he's got a hamstring pull. We are approaching the 14 minute mark. You are listening and and watching Gorecast live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl where we had the host Canada Games playing the visiting CBS Strikers and CBS Strikers have gone up by a score of one to nothing at the 11 minute mark by a goal by Daniel Quinn. Hello, Sean Burry. We have Philly taking the ball in the middle. On to outside to Carew. Carew up to his striker. Grant, Grant back to Philly. Nice play. Philly on the outside to Carter. Carter looking to attack and trying to defeat and go past and beat Ryan Day, but Ryan Day played a good defensive play, took the ball and put it out of touch with a throw in being awarded to Canada Games. And then we are here we have Hurry Carter deep. And the ball's been hit by Dolo, taken by Dolo to Carter to Philly. Felly looking to go wide. Beautiful play by Felly onto the outside, over Dunphy's head, and onto Carew. Matt Crew places the ball deep in the box and is taken by Molen. Molen. Molen to CBS number eight and on to Nika Booch. Booch me. And it's a nice hard tackle by number. 13 from the, from the CBS Strikers defense. Trevor Ivan, he has been in the league for quite some time right now. He played a couple years with the Laurentians. Prior to that, he played with CBS Strikers. He's the leader of their team, I believe. He's the captain. Here we have a CBS looking to Push the ball ahead and a nice defensive play by, again by Mitchell Burry and Burry to Carter and looking to go long to Manuel Dolo. Uh, 
Hello, Michelle Debris Thistle. Hello, Eugene Banfield. Welcome to Gorecast, live streaming from Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where we have the CBS striker leading the Canada Games by a score of one to nothing. There was just the one. Yeah, but. Oh, they didn't. They don't okay. Yeah, there was one down there, Daniel Quinn. But... Yeah, I was getting rather confused here because the score clock is showing uh, a 0 0. So I was just wondering if it was something I missed that they didn't count the goal. But the fans that are on side of me are saying, yes, it is definitely the, the ball was centered. As far as I know, it was one to nothing, one to nothing for CBS Strikers on a goal at the 11 minute mark by Daniel Quinn. I appreciate if you share the, uh, if you sh would share the live streaming. Much appreciated there, Eric Lundgren. Anyway, it's again, it's the CBS Strikers on the attack, and he goes in and is Mitchell Burry, Burry to Dunphy. Dunphy to McEwen, back to Felly, Felly over to Carter, Carter ahead to Emmanuel nice start, Dolo nice and he hits the back of his knee and Molin takes cover of the ball, back to Molin again. Third, third. Looking to go for a long ball, total switch here by the CBS striker and number 22 Josh Power just couldn't get his foot on the ball. Thanks, Lloyd Hillier, for your sharing the video. Starting to cool off here again now. I have my Nunavut jacket from the Arctic College. And I gotta put that on, even to the right of me. Some of the fans there with a blanket, so here we go again. A beautiful July weather. <laughs> Mitchell Burry outside to Carter. Carter to Felly. Felly back to Carter. Back to Felly. Back to Mitchell Burry. Burry inside to McEwen. And a, a little quicker, a little quicker. And there we have Dolo. Dolo's looking. And we have Trevor Ivan. He back stopping the CBS team and clearing the ball. Again is uh, Trevor Ivan. Ivan, he makes one step, two steps into Gary McEwen. Stepping inside, McEwen passes it over to Emmanuel Dolo. And Dolo with a, with a beautiful hit there by Emmanuel Dolo. A beautiful hit there by Dolo, too, from young McEwen, who started it all of this. One to one on a goal coming at the 19 minute mark by Emmanuel Dolo. And Dolo is a minor player, and I believe he's in the second in the scoring race right now, only behind. All-star player with the Holy Cross Crusaders, Jake Warren. Beautiful goal by Emmanuel Dolo. Coming at the 19 minute mark. One to one. Nice goal. It was a nice goal. Left foot, he saw the goalie. And the goalie had no chance. Put it right, right between the, the goal post and the back, and the back end of the post. Right in on a 45 degree. Beautiful goal. Hello, Jocelyn there. One to one. Thank you, Diane, for putting up the score. You wouldn't put the score up when it was one to nothing, would you, Diane? <laughs> Hello, Jocelyn and Melissa, Lori and Nelson. That's my wife and my daughters that are who are currently in Ontario at Toronto looking for a wedding dress. Hello, Daniel Crew. Here we have Tony Mull getting in on the action out there. He's talking to Felly there, just letting them know there's rules and regulations that you have to follow. And here we have no card on the play, but a foul, and the ball has been taken by Molin. He passes it over to his mate, and then it's intercepted by Dunphy. Dunphy, oh, and Felly. Miscommunication. 
And it was intercept, intercepted and again the Canada Games taking the ball. <laughs> Diane, yeah. <laughs> you might be sure, Diane. <laughs> here we have Carter and Carter looking to go long and here we have CBS. Madison. Hello, Chris Leak. Here we have Felly. On the outside, he pushes it over to Matt Crew. Crew to Dunphy. Dunphy to Felly. Over to Jacob Grant. Jacob Grant back to Golding. Golding to his center back. Oh, the ball's been turned over by Bennett, Bennett to Madison. And Madison turns it over to Golding. Golding turns it over, turns the ball to Nick Butch, Butch me. Here we have Gary McEwen. McEwen was the man responsible for the Canada games. Good play, five. Josh Handerhan back in the lineup for CBS. Strikers, and here we have Dolo. Dolo moving in, Molin looking. Dolo, you do not make the first move on Dolo. You back him up. Here Dolo takes on two. Dolo still carrying the ball, looking for someone to come up. And then a nice ball. Dolo back to Carter, Carter to Felly. Felly looking to go square, and he goes back to Caesar. Caesar to Dunphy. Dunphy didn't get his foot quite on the ball and has been turned over on back been position, been taken control by CBS. Here we have Felly looking to move in to Gary McEwen. McEwen to, back to Dunphy. Dunphy looking to switch the ball wide to Harry Carter. Carter looks for his center back, Mitchell Barry. Barry back to Dunphy. Dunphy looking to turn. He's been taken on by Madison. Dunphy takes the ball from Madison. Then he goes back with a nice control to Felly. Beautiful play by Felly on a 360 turn. Hello, Sarah and Pat Break. Hello, Ethel Isaacs. Welcome to Gorecast. Live streaming from here. A beautiful ball been taken. Oh, a nice, nice try there by Carter. And a beautiful see by Scott Budden, who just got his hand on it. You are listening to Gordcast live streaming and viewing from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where after 25 minutes of play, the score is tied one to one. The opening goal came from Daniel Quinn at the 11 minute mark and Manuel Dolo had a beautiful shot tying the game at the 19 minute mark. So after 25 minutes of play, we have a one to one score. Here we have Madison up front. Madison looks to go outside to Quinn. Hello, John Spearns from Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia. One to one, John. Say hello to your Cole Harbor is Sidney Crosby. Say hello to Sidney Crosby for us. Here from Newfoundland and Labrador and tell him congratulations on his Stanley Cup. There we have Felly back to Carter. Carter back to Riley Bennett. One to one, Ethel. Ethan. Isaacs right in the score. One to one. Hello, Paul Brake. One to one. Score after 25 minutes of play, you are listening and viewing Gorestream. Or Gorecast live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl, where we have Molson Challenge Cup play. And the score is one to one between the hosts, Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada Games, and the CBS Strikers FC. Hello, Colin Etchigary. Welcome to Gordcast. Thanks for the sharing. 
All been put inside, nice inside, and here's the keeper, the keeper right out. I think we have Hocko in net. Hocko in net for the, here we have Jacob Grant. Jacob Grant looking to go beat, but he figures no one is with him, so he comes back to Felly. Felly is back to Carter. Carter takes control. Back to Caesar, on to his outside wing back. Matt Crew, Crew fumbling the ball, and after he fumbles it, he gets it back and he puts it ahead to, to McEwen. McEwen looking to go inside. Felly with a nice run. Nice ball by Felly to the outside. To we have Gary Carter. Or Harry Carter. Gary Carter was used to be with Exos. Here we have number 10, and we have a whistle on the play, and the flag is up with an offside against Jacob Brent. Hello, Blair Elwert from CBS, or living in, currently living in CBS. You are watching Gorecast live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl where we have Molson Challenge Cup action between the host Canada Games and the CBS Strikers, where the score after 27 minutes of play is one to one. One to one, goal scorers coming at the 11 minute mark, Daniel Quinn for CBS. And it was Emmanuel Dolo at 19 minute mark for the tie the match. At one to one after 19 minutes of play, here we have 28 minutes gone. Hello, Rhonda Morrissey, T watching from Georgetown, Ontario. Welcome, Ontario, to Molson Challenge Cup play in Newfoundland and Labrador. You're watching Newfoundland and Labrador Soccer Association. Here we have a few guys from the Felians here to take in the match. <laughs> I am live. I'm trying to be. Here we have Tyler Windsor. Everybody's favorite wing back. <laughs> What's that? Everybody's favorite wing back. <laughs> the guys there from. Where we go? I gotta try to get the, a little bit bigger so we'll get a little bit closer to the play. Let me know, folks, how, how are, is the audio and how is the video coming true? Any issues, I'll try to correct it. Thanks, Blair. Thanks for your complimentary remarks. You're more than welcome, sir. It's been a big addition to the league this year. Doing a lot of coverage, promoting the Canada Games, doing a, a lot of the Canada Games. I've done several of the Laurentians Games as well. I'm going to do one with the Canada Games before they go, and let's get to know those players before they go and represent our province. That will be taking place, the Nationals will be taking place in August, the second week in August will be the men's play, and that's it's to be played in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Currently the, the Canada Games have a record of five wins, six losses, and two ties. Very, very respectable playing in the Premier League in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. A little more zoom in, Blair. Okay, Blair, thank you so much. Here we have Carter. Carter. Hurry, Carter, into Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo, back to Carter. Carter's been, oh, oh very odd. Hands on, but like you say, the referee let it go. Here we have Trevor Ivany. Trevor Ivany moving up. On the outside to Daniel Quinn, goal scorer. The goal scorer for the CBS Strikers, number six, Daniel Quinn. Hello, Joyce Malay. My sister is watching from Grand Prairie, Alberta. Welcome to Gorecast. I'm live streaming here from the Gushu Complex in, Mir in Mount Pearl, where the score after 31 minutes is one to one. Ball's been taken by the defense, who generally work it back and forth, looking for to to get an opening. Felly, they'll go from the defense to the midfield, and then they'll try to break. 
And Jacob Grant, one of the strikers. Oh, and Jacob Grant has been bolted over. And the referee makes a call. There we have Tarek El Batter watching from Qatar. Thank you for covering these games, Gordon. Let's go CBS. So obviously you have a, a friend playing with the CBS strikers. Welcome to Gordcast. Hello, Kevin Pittman. I'm not sure if you're home now, Kevin, or you're still in Alberta, or you're on your way home. Hello, Julie Loader watching from Montreal, Quebec. There we have Dunphy taking the ball at maybe the 30, 18, 12, yeah, approximately 30 yards. Dunphy sizes up the situation, looking to put the ball in deep. And it's put inside and it's been hit away by CBS strikers. Nice play here by, hey, you better watch it there, you don't. Take on a man when you're playing last man. Better be, honey, look to go to number number five. Here we have Felly. Felly looking to go long to Jacob Grant. Jacob Grant looks to go around. He beats one man. He's got two. He's back to Felly. Kelly goes square, he's over to Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo's getting ready, Dolo to the outside to Carter. Carter's been blocked by defensively by, here we have Madison back into the play, nice defensive play. I like the way Madison moves up and down the field. He's playing striker, but he sure helps out his midfield. Here the ball's been pushed through, but in no, to no avail. It looks, oh, a foul on the play. Definitely a foul on the play. To the strikers. Hello, Devin Ryan. Number four newcomer with the St. Lawrence Laurentians. Good addition, young player, good future ahead of you. You got to learn the hard way, you got to learn the Laurentian way. Here we have Matt Carew. Looking for his mate, Golding. Golding on the outside or to his center back to Mitchell Burry. Burry sizes up the situation over to Caesar. Caesar again to go wide to the outside right to Matt Crew. Crew looks to go around one. Now, nice layoff. And we need to have more movement on the play in order for to get the ball. The ball has been taken by Quinn. Quinn turns over the ball to Gary McEwen. Here we have Philly. Philly looking to on the goal outside to Jacob Grant. Oh, Jacob Grant just to the outside. Here we have the ball goes out of touch over the goal line with a corner kick being awarded to Newfoundland Labrador Canada Games. You are watching Gorecast live stream from. Mount Pearl Gushu Complex, where we have Molson Challenge Cup play between the hosts, Canada Games and CBS Strikers, score after 35 minutes, one to one. Here we have a corner kick been taken by Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo plays it the ball deep inside. And here we have Budden coming to the rescue and he takes the ball right on the six yard line. Budden. Right, it's an offside. Yeah, it was an offside. This weekend, the Laurentians are uh, in town. They'll play the Strikers. CBS Strikers in uh, CBS at Topsail Field Saturday at 7 o'clock. And on Sunday, they play the Felians at King George the Fifth Field at 1 o'clock. 
Tarek Abud, Madison is the best player in the league when he doesn't mess around in his defensive third. Argentinians love taking extra touches. Thank you so much for your commentary, sir. Here we had the ball been taken by Mitchell Burry. Burry to Caesar. And it's been stolen away by Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones. Madison, I would have to say, is a great addition to the league and a superb addition to the CBS Strikers. It's making their team definitely more competitive. Here the ball is going inside. And I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A great scoring opportunity by CBS. I don't know if it was a flag on the play. He seemed to be camping there by himself. And it is a free, free shot or a free ball being awarded to. Handball. Handball, yeah, it had to be. Had to be something in order for him to be nesting there like that all by himself. Here we have Philly. Philly in control of the ball, moving the ball over to Dunphy. Dunphy is balls and taken away by Madison. Dunphy has taken the ball from Madison. Nice recovery by Dunphy. Dunphy looking to go long to Gary McEwen. McEwen on the inside and it's back to Dunphy. Dunphy has been by Madison and his number 12 moves in. Trevor Ivany, number 12. Trevor Ivany right over on the left-hand side. Here we have Dunphy on the outside right, looking to put the ball deep in the CBS. Dunphy puts his hand up and he's looking to go long and he places it on the carpet where it's intercepted by CBS. Back to Josh Power. Power puts the ball in the middle, but Felly and then the ball hits off a Referee, it struck the referee. Tony Malt, in very much in control of the game. He talks to his players rather nice. Played the game for a long time. He's a Hall of Famer, Provincial Hall of Famer. Played with the Holy Cross team for years. Good, solid player. Belly and the ball has been taken by. CBS, CBS looking to lob it over. Oh, it's a nice play. Nice play by, by Carter as CBS looked to go around him. Number Nico Buchmi. The ball is, if I can get it down in the corner, there you'll get the heads off the, uh, the Mel Pearl, not Mel Pearl, the Felian players. Hello, Chris Slaney. Hello, Perry Rennie. You are watching Gordcast live streaming from Mount Pearl Gushu Complex, where after 40 minutes of play at Canada Games 1, here and Manuel Dolo looking to run the field. Manuel Dolo running, running men, and Manuel Dolo been, look, been taken by Molin. And Trevor Riley gone past Molin. Inside the Trevor Ivney, and it's Dolo, Dolo holding the ball, and a nice play. Oh, a beautiful play by Dolo back to Felly. Beautiful play. Beautiful individual play, and he looked to set up Felly. Felly just put it in the hands of Budden, the goalkeeper here today for. The CBS strikers. 41 minutes have gone by. Hello, Ken Rule, watching from Nova Scotia. Here we have McEwen. A 
lot of turnovers again in the middle of the field. Eh? We have Caesar looking to go forward. Caesar turns over the ball, overturns the ball over to Felly. Felly to Dunphy. Dunphy looking and carrying the ball. He's sizing it up and he's again just home from your walk. Good for you, Ken Rowe. Hello, Stanley Moyles. From Gurnish on the Bjorn Peninsula. I'm not sure where you're living at now, Stanley, but welcome to Gordcast. We're after 42 minutes of play. It's Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games 1, CBS Strikers FC 1. The ball's been taken by Dolo, who's had a, a rather good half. Good on the offense. Hello, Nedimensky. From the Fidians. Here we have Dunphy looking to go long to Carter. Oh. Ball is right here in the corner. Carter back to Felly. Felly back to Riley Bennett. Bennett to Felly. And one touch, you gotta get that one touch moving fast. Felly looks to take in position, and Felly puts it inside to Jacob Grant. And here on the opposite side of the field, we have a flag on the play, and as a result, offsides. <laughs> 43 minutes of action have gone by one to one between CBS strikers at a Goal coming at the 11-minute mark off the boot of Daniel Quinn. And it was Canada Games tying it up on a goal on a beautiful shot by Emmanuel Dolo at the 19-minute mark. Hello, Ron Lane. Stanley Miles, you're in Alberta. Welcome to... Stanley was a good player in your day as well, Stanley. Here we have Trevor Ivany. Here we have Dolo grabbing on to Ivany. Carter, oh, a lot of physical play, Dolo. Whoa, hey. Hello, Paul Campbell. A lot of physical play here. Right in front of me. Hey, you. Hello, Gary Forsay. One to one here, Gary. Great game. 44 minutes have gone by. Hello, Raymond Hutchings. Like your comments today on the, my uh, article. Here we have uh, Tony Malt there talking to Emmanuel Dolo. Well, Tony is still trying to. Tony just playing the game. He knows how to play the game. And Dolo back to Mitchell Burry. Burry. Burry in the middle to Caesar, looking to go outside to Matt Carew. Crew looking to switch it over and it's turned over, overturned and taken by Quinn. Quinn, ball's been stolen by Felly. Back to Carter, back to Felly, back to Emmanuel Dolo, looking for to get Felly to go through and Trevor Ivany. He's having no part of this. Gary, I'm on the way. Ooh. We have 45 minutes have gone by and we are now on referee's time in the first half. Hello, Raymond Hutchings. Welcome to Gordcast. Live streaming Molson Challenge Cup play from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl where we have a one-to-one -one draw after 45 minutes of play and now we're playing referee's time. We have Feli looking the ball and here we have Half time, folks. <laughs> half time. We'll be back for a half time intermission in two minutes. Chad Ellis is watching. Welcome, Chad Ellis, and welcome, Gary Forsythe, head coach with the. Uh, CBS Strikers FC team. Hello, Perry Stone. Welcome to the Gordcast live streaming from 
to Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl. Where after 45 minutes of play, we have a one-to-one -one score with Daniel Quinn scoring for the strikers at the 11 minute arc. And it was Emmanuel Dolo tying the game. Hello, Neil Edwards. Not sure where you're living at, Neil. Maybe in Lawn, or from Lawn anyway. Emmanuel Dolo tying the score at the 19 minute marks. Also, today we have the second game of the Eastern Canadian qualifying in LSA Championships. Hello, Lynn. I'll be back in one minute to have halftime intermission one to one after 45 minutes of play. Let's see what I got here. No, my other. Want to say a few words? No. Okay. You're doing a great job. Okay, sir. Anybody want a few words, folks? <laughs> I'm asking the folks here that are breathing the elements. Anybody wants a few words? Good evening, folks. Welcome to Gord Cast. Halftime intermission between the CBS Strikers FC and Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games. After 45 minutes of play, we have a one-to-one -one tie with the opening goal coming at the 11-minute mark for the CBS Strikers off the boot of Daniel Quinn. And at the 19 minute mark, it was Emmanuel Dolo tying the score on a beautiful shot, which was set up by the work of Gary McEwen. It was a rather hard tackling game. I would think the play was fairly even. Uh, Madison, the striker for uh, key striker for uh, for CBS strikers, getting a, a more of a good watch on him. He plays the field very well, strong defensively and good of offensively. So he's been uh, a great addition to the league, as well as uh, he's uh, a good on the offense and in, in getting goals. He's got a number of goals for CBS. This season, which has made uh, their team be very competitive, their record, CBS Strikers' record uh, so far this season, been five wins, five losses, uh, two ties. They have 16 goals for and 16 goals against. So there are 500 on the board. Very much, much, much improved on last season. So you, you can know when uh, it's just a matter of a season, you can turn it around with, with a few additions. They also have uh, Josh Hanrahan, who was uh, a good player, solid player with the last Canada Games team Newfoundland and Labrador had. He has returned home, so that's a big addition to uh, CBS as well. So I, I, I can see CBS uh, 
pushing for uh, to compete for uh, for a playoff spot, but it's not going to be easy because the four the four top teams that are played in the league for so, uh, with the history of uh, Holy Cross, St. Lawrence, and Fittings, and Mount Pearl, it's not easy to beat them over a 23 game schedule. But CBS, I think they, it's imperative that they win this game here today. While uh, Canada Games have played a very good half, physically I think they're getting uh, they're getting pushed around a bit, which is to be expected. The games are meaning that much more at this point in the season because of uh, teams are looking at the standings prior to uh, each and every game. And the Canada Games have five wins, six losses, two ties prior to this game. But for those that took in prior to the game, where I mentioned about their record, uh, their goal scoring, uh, goals for and against is uh, something for the uh, coaching staff to look at. They have 16 goals for. And uh, I believe it's uh, 23 against for a minus seven. So that's something they definitely can look at. But Jonathan Quirk, one of the ones that would be a mainstay on the defense has been out for a considerable amount of time. He's got to be out the last six or seven games and even more. And even Mitchell Burry, one of their star forwards, he's been out most of all the season too. So they are two players and I know you got player, 20 players, but once you go past a certain number, you don't have the strength of your top 11 or your top 14 players. So. But again, I, I can see this team competing at the, uh, at the Nationals when they play uh, in Winnipeg. In, uh, that's in August, second week in August. I think they'll be a good representative. They got a good draw. They're in the division with uh, New Brunswick and the Northwest Territory. So, and it's uh, top two teams advance to the top eight. So they've got a good draw, and I would expect that they they won the Atlantic Championship prior to uh, prior to the season, so I, I I could expect them to come out first, if not definitely second. So so that's a big bonus for them. And and playing this 18 game exhibition by in the Newfoundland and Labrador Senior Men's Molson Challenge Cup League will do nothing but help the team. The standings as of now in the Molson Challenge Cup League are the Laurentians in first place with 26 points. Followed by Feelings and Mount Pearl tied for second with 20 points each. And then in fourth place, you have CBS Strikers with 17 points. So you can see what this game would mean, the win would mean to CBS. It would put them right in with uh, Feelings, Mount Pearl, and it would put them at a virtual standstill. So they would have 20 points, all three teams. Holy Cross, who have made a move in their last, well, last four games. I believe they got three wins and a tie. They are now up to 15 points with a couple of games in hand. And they have uh, Zach Wade, MVP for the season, 2016 season, have returned. So they're looking stronger to me each and every game. And I'd be much surprised if they don't make the top four. So it's going to come down. It's going to be, a, I think, a nail biter at the end of the season for second and third. And top two teams, we all know the advantage of the second and third. You get the one-two one, two playoff format, and the winner goes on to the final, and the loser gets uh, to play in the semifinal. And then I think we're going to have a, a fight right to the end for the fourth place which right now is anyone's guess. Scoring leaders as of today, prior to this game, well, Jake Warren had 10. Emmanuel Dolo, who was tied with Tyler Forsey with seven goals, now with one goal here tonight, has taken over sole possession of second in the scoring race. Rather incredible for a junior player with eight goals. So he's in second with eight goals. In third is Tyler Forsey with seven goals. Eric uh, Madison, uh, CBS striker, is in uh, fourth place with six goals. 
And then rounding off the top five is young uh, Brent Hennebury with uh, St. Lawrence Laurentians. I also, uh, something I will do uh, along the way, birthdays today I know that I have uh, on the friends I have on Facebook is, uh, I know yesterday it was, uh, want to certainly wish uh, or uh, belated happy birthdays to Jim Jobmany from St. Lawrence who turned uh, 65. So Jim, uh, if you or anyone belong to you, are watching. Uh, happy birthday, Jim, and welcome to the uh, the age of, I don't know what we call it, Jim. When, once you get 65, we say respected seniors. Anyway, birthdays today, Ellis Cole. Ellis is from Grand Bank. Played soccer in Grand Bank, but it's been a mainstay with uh, in Mel Pearl, especially with their uh, master team for the last decade or so, and has been coached. And so, Ellis, uh, certainly a happy birthday to you today, and young uh, Daniel Kelly there uh, from St. Lawrence. Rudy Kelly is uh, son there. Tomorrow, I, I see a happy birthday uh, greetings go out to a number of soccer players here. Steve Reddy, that would be CBS. And then we have Eugene Brushett from Marystown, happy birthday. Gord Farrell, CBS. Matthew Sharp, who's involved with uh, Holy Cross. Then we have uh, Glenn Shepherd, Taylor Smith from uh, the Felians, and my uh, niece who's living in Alberta, Marcia Kelly. So happy birthday to all of you folks. Anyway, we're just minutes away here now from returning to uh, to action for the second half. Also on, on today, folks that uh, couldn't get to do two of them because it was virtually impossible is the Eastern Canadian Masters uh, qualifier where the winner of that series goes on to uh, on to uh, represent Newfoundland and Labrador the NLSA at the Eastern Canadian Championships, which is a national tournament that will be played again this year in uh, Quebec, and and with the L in LSA, it was only two teams that were showed interest of uh, playing for the for the right to represent uh, the in LSA, and they were Holy Cross and Feelings. And any any time you have just two teams enter, you go with a best of three. So on their opening game on Monday night, it was. Uh, a three to two for Holy Cross, and they're playing their second contest tonight at eight o'clock. But that's going on at King George the Fifth Field. So I, no way do I have any uh, way of getting any uh, any scores because obviously my my phone has been used for the Gordcast here. Do we have a great game? And again, I think well, we're basically back where the players are coming onto the field. And I thank you all for tuning in to Gordcast live streaming for the Molson Challenge Cup play here at the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl, where after 45 minutes of play, Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games and the CBS Strikers are tied at one to one. Okay, let's go back to the players coming on the field. Uh, Matt, I saw Matt, your birthday is tomorrow there, Matt. Welcome and happy birthday for you tomorrow, Matt. Marcus Turpin. Hello, Marcus. Good, good half of action. Referee was involved. He controlled the game. CBS were a little aggressive. No cards on the play. game I feel again as uh, game is critical I, I feel for the CBS to get a win if they're going to maintain and and keep playing for a playoff position uh, come on Labor Day weekend come on number 14 so we said it was
is after cooling off here. Yeah, cooling off a lot. For those who are tuning in, I will be live streaming the game, uh, the L Boat Laurentians game of the weekend, Saturday evening uh, at uh, 7 o'clock in CBS. Laurentians take on the Strikers. And then on Sunday, the Laurentians will be playing uh, the Feelings at King George the Fifth Field at 1 o'clock. So both of those games will be live streamed. Hello, Patrick. Patrick Fewer, coach of Warner Brook. Keep your head going. Keep it going strong, Patrick. You look how uh, what one season can do to turn it around. I know the season's not over yet, but you look at the record that CBS had last year, and in the matter of one season, but you get three players, three additions, and you can turn your season right around. So certainly you want to wish the Cornerbrook team all the best in the remainder of the season. Just hold, hold together, hold your head high. Some quality players on your team. Glad to see uh, Logan McIsaac score a couple uh, goals there. He was rookie of the year last year. Anyway, we're back to live action here from Gushu Complex at the lower our middle small wood feel. There you're welcome, Patrick. You've been a long part of the program in regards to playing the program. I text that was not supposed to go to you. That was that, oh, I'm on the way. That was supposed to go to my coach. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we have uh, back out on the field. His play is less than a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we have Evan Knight is uh, on ball taken, and it's been Jacob Grant. Knocked down by uh, Madison, and the referee makes a call on the play and awards a free kick to Matt Crew, number four. Matt Crew, brother of Daniel Crew, who currently plays with the St. Lawrence Laurentians. Both of them play wing back position as well. Ball's been cleared by the strikers. And goes out of touch with a troll in being awarded. Number eight, I've got some clarification on number eight as well. Number eight is Josh Hanrahan. He wasn't on the sheet that I got because at that time he wasn't uh, he wasn't playing. He was still away. For Golding, Golding steps in as out to Carter, Carter to Philly. Hello, Katie Dunphy. Welcome to Gorecast, live streaming from the Gushu <laughs> Complex in Mount Pearl, where we have Molson Challenge Cup play between Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada Games, and CBS Strikers. And the uh, score after 47 minutes of play is 1 to 1. Ball has been on the outside to that would be let's see if they got a new player in. No, it's Carter. 
I get a number and are right across by the dugouts. Good game here at Gushu Complex. Fairly even. Two nice goals. But Sam Huckle, it is in goal today for uh, the game team. So who's switching the number to number nine on the hand of the Nemo family? He's okay with Sam's number. Sam will get 15 this year. <laughs> Here we have Philly taking the ball, looking to go long to Manuel Dolo. It looks like to go at a touch with a throw in being awarded to CBS Triggers. It's Ryan Day looking to retrieve the ball with a throw in. Deep in CBS territory, CBS Strikers. Score after 49 minutes of play, one to one. Goal scores, Daniel Crew at the 19 minute mark for the CBS Strikers or at the 11 minute mark and the game was tied by Emmanuel Dolo at the 19 minute mark for the Canada game team. Hello, Andrew Peter Hillier. Welcome to Gorecast, live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where after nearly 50 minutes of play, we have a one-to-one -one draw between the CBS Strikers FC team and Newfoundland Labrador Canada Games. Here we have Manuel Dolo looking to move into Gary McEwen. And here we have McEwen going, stepping aside, Trevor Ivany. McEwen looks to go 360. No, and uh, to no avail. The ball has been turned over again by CBS. Taken by Golding over to Evan Knight, outside to Jacob Grant. Grant looks to go around. He falls, number three says play on. Madison shielding the ball rather nice off against Dunphy. The balls go outside to to Sirayef. Sirif Elf. This to Nika Butchmi. It's taken by Dunphy to Jacob Grant. Grant puts a level of skill, putting the ball over the head of the CBS player. And again, it's been taken by Golding. Golding to Grant. I like Jacob Grant. He's a big guy. Plays his body rather well. Very skillful. Thank you, Gord. You're great to watch and listen to when you're working. Oh, you got a great job there, Peter. <laughs> it's getting cold here. I know I'm getting, if you hear my voice. Hello, Tommy Oss. Welcome to Gorecast. Score is 1-1 one one after 51 minutes of play. Canada Games are playing the ball around, much in control after 45 minutes. Goaling on the outside to... Evan Knight, Knight to Jacob Grant. Grant looks to go to Dunphy and to Noah Dale. The ball goes at a touch with a troll in being awarded to Canada Games. It looks like to be Evan Knight to Jacob Grant. Grant back to Evan Knight. No, it was Dolo been bolted over by Madison. Madison puts out of his urn, but again the play resumes. It's Ryan Dunphy on the in the middle to the outside to Carter. Carter looks to go around and won, but no, he stopped by the right wing back. It was a beautiful evening here, but it has cooled off rather fast. Ball is placed ahead to Madison. Madison looks to go long to Quinn. To Pomeroy, Pomeroy to 22, to Power. And the ball's inside, oh, nice save, nice save here by Hako. CBS was one player away from, it was, it would have been uh, 
Josh Stryker against the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper read the play rather well, took control, and he took a great scoring opportunity away from the strikers. It's Caesar out to Evan Knight. Knight to Jacob Grant. Grant takes possession, controls the ball nicely. Over to Felly. Felly looks back to Grant. And, and it's been... An, Grant knocks down to CBS number seven, Nika Bucci. And the referee awards a free kick to the CBS strikers. Here we have Trevor Ivany taking the ball in at the center back position and he looks to go long to Madison, intercepted by Mitchell Burry. Hello, Bobby Gamba. Welcome to Gordcast, live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where you're watching Molson Challenge Cup play with a one-to-one -one tie between the Newfoundland Labrador Canada Games and the CBS Strikers. It was Daniel. It was Daniel Quinn opening the scoring for the CBS Strikers at the 11-minute mark, and it was. Emmanuel Dolo tying the game at the 19 minute mark and after 55 minutes of play we still have a one-to-one -one score. We are approaching the 55 minute mark. Trying to get myself familiar with the CBS Strikers numbers. Josh Power. CBS Strikers are, their record indicates to me, and it tells the true story. They are at 500. Here we have Madison coming inside, and it's Sam Hockle. But the ball is in there, and it's, it, yes. it's a goal. And the goalie was outside making a beautiful see, but it the goalie got caught outside and let's see what's going on. Yeah, the goalie made contact with a striker's player. And the goalie went down and it was a loose ball. Referee let the play go on. And it was Pomrai, Tony Pomrai, scoring for the CBS Strikers at the 56 minute mark. Tony Pomrai has scored a very important goal here today, giving the CBS Strikers a two to one lead over Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games. It was sort of a controversial <laughs> play. The goalie came outside and was he was went down. Referee felt it was no interference. Play kind of slowed down, and then the ball went over to Tony Pomeroy, and he just kicked it at the goal. And it looked like it may go over on a bounce, but it bounced right into a wide, empty net. Very important goal by Tony Pomeroy to give the CBS Strikers a 2-1 lead after 57 minutes of play over the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada game. Here we have Evan Knight. Yeah, Madison. I'm impressed with Madison. Not only is a goal scorer, he plays the field very well. Here we have Molin. Molin to Quinn. Here we have Philly. Philly stepping inside. Here we have Emmanuel Dolo turning. Emmanuel Dolo turning. Emmanuel. Do oh, yeah. And it's a nice ball taken by the goalie. Budden. Scott Budden made a nice recovery, taking the ball away from Emmanuel Dolo. Hello, Jonathan Grant. 
Here we have Feli. Feli moving back and forth. He pushes the ball along to Dunphy. Dunphy inside with a beautiful ball to Jacob Grant. A beautiful ball to Jacob Grant. And it's Josh Power to the rescue with a nice defensive play by 22 from the CBS striker, Josh Power. Nice, CBS working the ball rather nice, taking their time, looking for an open man to come back to field. Where all 10 players of Canada games now have moved back to field. Here we have Molan looking to go long, and it's Riley Bennett with a header. Outside to Carter, Carter back to Bennett. Riley Bennett over to 26, Evan Knight. Evan moving down the right side to Jacob Grant. Grant goes back to Dunphy in midfield. Dunphy allows the ball to run on to Caesar. Caesar let it go to his outside right man, Harry Carter. Carter looking for Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo carries the ball rather well. Dolo, no need to push the ball off and again it's Madison 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 looking to go long but it looks to be Riley Bennett it's been Pomeroy fighting bad hey, good midfield get out Trevor good work they get up earlier you push them up earlier Here we have some of the fans singing out. <laughs> Here we have some of the fans singing out to the players. <laughs> and the fans start to laugh. Fans coaching away. Big goal by Tony Pomeroy giving CBS a two to one lead. After 60 minutes of play, you are listening and watching Gorecast live streaming from the King. Nope, from the Gushu Complex. Here we have 18 moving in. Oh, oh, a nice save. And uh, again, Hockle was playing out rather, rather high and looked like 18 which was Pomeroy was to take the ball around him and Pomeroy scored his, his goal from uh, again with the goalkeeper way out of the net and, and, and Pomeroy had to win around again to Hako, it would have been the same thing. Again, you are listening to Gore Stream from the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl. You are watching Molson Challenge Cup play where the CBS strikers currently lead the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games by a score of two to one after 62 minutes of play. Things are getting heated and battled here in the second half. The play is on as oh oh god. Here we have Dunphy looking to go long and it just goes wide of the net with a goal kick coming up for the CBS Strikers. 
And in goal for the strikers today is Scott Budden. Scott Budden. Kicks the ball out to the right wing. Ball looks to go long. And again is Pomeroy running. Pomeroy is, has been much involved here in the second half. Very much involved in the second half. Scoring the goal and causing a lot of havoc on the defense of the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada game team. Hello, Tyler Windsor, wherever you're watching. You were sitting there shortly, but here the ball's been taken out by Dunphy. Dunphy clears the ball to Jacob Grant. Grant runs the field rather nice. Here we have a nice overlap by Evan Knight. A beautiful run by Evan Knight. Evan Knight takes the ball in. And a nice save by Button. Beautiful, beautiful run by Evan Knight. A hole in on the field with Jacob Grant looking to his right, giving him a free ball. And it was a nice save by the keeper Button for have, uh, Jacob Grant. Jacob Grant has been involved in the action all throughout the contest. Evan Knight on the right side working the ball down to Gary McEwen. Here we have Jacob Grant back to center back Mitchell Barry. Barry out to left wing back Harry Carter. Harry Carter back to Philly. Philly on the outside over to Dunphy. Dunphy puts it to right wing midfield. Evan Knight. Knight puts it right in and it's a ball being cleared by by strikers player and we have a man down on the field do we have a number trevor trevor, trevor ivany number 12 captain of the cbs strikers and if he's down you can be assured that he's hurt because he don't go down very easy <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Trevor Ivany is a mainstay with CBS Strikers. He went over to the Laurentians for a couple of seasons. He's back with the Strikers, where he leads the team in heart and soul. And he's a, he's a player that is not all skilled, but he gives 100% every game. Hello, Shane Itchigary. Welcome to Gordcast, live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where we have... The CBS Strikers FC leading the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games by a score of 2-1. to one. The Strikers are currently in fourth place with 17 points. And the Feely and Sound Mount Pearl are tied for second and third, really, with uh, 20 points. So uh, a win here today could give the CBS Strikers a tie for second place with other two teams, Mount Pearl and Feely. And here we had Dunphy to pushing the ball to Grant. Grant on the outside to a nice overlap again by Evan Knight. Evan Knight puts the ball in deep, and the ball goes through the box and is on the outside to left wing to Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo, the ball goes off the field and it's been thrown in by CBS. And it's been booted away. Long ball where we have Riley Bennett looking to retrieve the ball. 67 minutes have gone by. 2-1 to one for the CBS Strikers FC over Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games. Here we have David Golding, center back for the game team, looking to push the ball to Dunphy. Dunphy is in the middle. Dunphy to McEwen. McEwen to Jacob Grant. On the outside here we have Evan Knight. Here we have Nick Abuchmi. And he's been uh, Madison hitting young Caesar. Here we have Mitchell. Do 
Joe Mitchell Bennett. Again, the games team is here. We have again today uh, two more goals against. <laughs> so they're giving up quite a lot of goals. Ball's been pushed from Caesar to Evan Knight. Knight in the middle to Dunphy, number 14. 14 to McEwen, 12. Dunphy was hit and the ball goes back to Caesar into Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo to Feli into men. Oh, what a beautiful try. He tried to put it with the heel over the defense and it was stopped by another a CBS player. Here we have Jacob Grant. And Jacob Grant has been hit to the turf by Josh Power. Ball's been pushed in and taken by Caesar to Philly. Philly looks to go around, and it was a nice stop again by CBS. CBS are rather back on their heels here now after 70 minutes of play. Ever since CBS went up by a score of 2-1, to one, they're playing rather defensive, and the Canada games are taking the tomb. Here we have Manuel Dolo, and he's been surrounded by C three CBS players. And they kick the ball away. Ball's been taken by Mitchell Burry. Burry to Caesar. On to Harry Carter. Carter back to Mitchell. Mitchell over to one. A uh, two to one here for CBS. Uh, Mark, write it in if you don't mind for me. Mark Pittman, Michael Kearney. Welcome to Gordcast. Live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where we have Molson Challenge Cup play, where the CBS Strikers are currently leading the, the Newfoundland Labrador Canada Games by a score of 2-1. to one. Ball's been pushed ahead again. Is Pomeroy being challenged? Here we have Felly. And it's... Molen to the defense. Felly. Dunphy. Over to Carter. Carter going into McEwen. McEwen to Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo looking. Dolo. What a beautiful play. Here we got a beautiful play. And it was a nice, nice, nice defensive play. It's a Canada Games. Our pushing Canada Games are pressing, but it is CBS who are currently in the league by a score of two to one after 71 minutes of play here at the Kushu Complex in Mount Pearl. You are tuning into Gorecast, live streaming from the Kushu Complex, where the CBS strikers are currently leading the Canada Games by a score of two to one after 71 minutes of play. Hello, Clinton Edwards from living in Alberta, who will be home shortly to play with the Laurentians. Hello, Judy Turpin. Welcome to Gordcast. Two to one for CBS Strikers FC over the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games. Games, games are still carrying to play, and it's uh, CBS at this point are, I think, settling in on to play totally defensive and look for the for that one goal. Thanks, Freeman. Thank you so much, Ryan Decker. Welcome to Gordcast. Here we are after 73 minutes of play, live from the Kushu Complex in Mel Pearl where you are watching Molson Challenge Cup play where the CBS Strikers currently lead the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games by a score of two to one. Here we have Dunphy going up. The ball goes to Evan Knight, taken by center back Trevor Ivany. Ball's been pushed 
up front to CBS and they are looking to go back. Here we have Molan taking the ball, pushing the ball back into midfield. Here we have uh, Golding. Here we have Madison. Hello, Jocelyn. Rather cool here in Mel Pearl this evening. Safe trip home tomorrow morning. Give me a call later on tonight. Hello, Tristan Slaney. Welcome to Gorecast, where we have the CBS Strikers leading the Newfoundland Labrador Canada games after 74 minutes of play by a score of 2 to 1. Games are pushing, they are pressing, and CBS have gone into a defensive shell looking to maintain the one goal lead. Hello, Logan Henneberry. Here we have the ball into Manuel Dolo. Dolo looking to go around two, and he's stopped by number three, CBS striker. On your hello, Roger Saney. Welcome to Gorecast. Score is two to one for uh, CBS Strikers over Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games. Hello, Ray Beck. You're back on. Welcome to Gorecast. Two to one at the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl. Molson Challenge Cup play where the CBS Strikers are leading the Newfoundland and Labrador Can Can Canada games by a score of two to one with 75 minutes of play gone by. So we are down to the last 15 minutes. Manuel Dolo, Manuel Dolo looking for to maintain and the ball's been taken by Bochmi and here we have Jacob Grant looking to go around. No, no. Oh, the. And it's. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. Tony Pomride. A goal scorer here in the second half. Go, Ryan. Go. Ryan is after playing a good game here tonight, Katie. Very, very. He's very much involved. Distributes the ball very, very well. Hello, Norm Butt, former GB goalkeeper and now living in Nova Scotia. Here we have. And, uh, Josh Power looking to go inside and here we have Madison. Madison does a lot of running for the CBS Strikers. A lot of running, much involved. So it brings a, a good physical element to the game. A good scoring touch, a very complete player, a very good addition again for the CBS Strikers. has been kicked away again. That's all CBS are doing here for the last, I don't know, be it 20 minutes or so. Just kicking the ball away and giving the ball back to possession off the game team. But they have a blockade up with a defense. No, start. We got to come for that. Two to one after 77 minutes of play for the CBS Strikers over the Canada Games with Tony Pomry scoring the go ahead goal in the second half for the CBS Strikers. Goal coming at approximately the 67 minute mark. 
Balls put in again by the strikers or clear by the strikers. And do we have a corner kick? I don't know, the referee is signaling, but. Hello, Shane Dunphy, nephew Shane Dunphy. You are watching Gorecast live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where you had an. CBS Strikers currently leading the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games after 78 minutes of play by a score of 2-1. to one. It was Daniel, Caru Daniel Quinn opening the scoring for the uh, Strikers at the 11 minute mark, followed up by Emmanuel Dolo at the 19 minute mark with a halftime score of 1-1. One to one. And it was Pomrai, Tony Pomrai, with the all-important second goal for the strikers, giving them the lead at the 67-minute mark. And that lead holds, and now we are down to roughly 10 minutes of play in regulation time. The ball has been pushed up over, and since CBS scored their goal. They've gone into a complete defensive shell. Back over the back line, clearing the ball, looking to, for the push the ball ahead to uh, to Madison or Pomroy. Steve Reddy, happy birthday for you tomorrow, Steve. Here we have. Hako, Hako outside to push it down the middle to Caesar, and again the ball has been kicked away and cleared by the strikers. Hello, Vera Snook. Welcome to Gordcast, live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where we have Molson Challenge Cup action, where the CBS strikers are currently leading the. Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games by a score of two to one. The ball's put deep inside, goes off the head of Jacob Grant. Hello, Dave. Welcome to Gorecast. Hello, Blair. Welcome back on to Gorecast, where we have ten minutes of play left in the contest. Where? The CBS Strikers are leading the Newfoundland and Labrador Canada games by a score to one. It's been all Canada games since uh, CBS went ahead. CBS have gone back to a complete defensive shell and they, have, they haven't they have allowed a really a good scoring opportunity, but they've been back on their heels for the past 15, 20 minutes for sure. It's a beautiful evening here, but the temperature is not so beautiful or not so great. Ball has been pushed around by Felly. Felly looking to go into Jacob Grant, and again the ball has been pushed and kicked and cleared by the strikers. Here we have Emmanuel Dolo. <laughs> I'm laughing at you here, Blair. No no swearing on my gore cast, Blair. <laughs> uh, it's on that. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> See, <I didn't. laughs> no, not you. <laughs> I got kids over here. I got to watch my mouth. Yeah, it's one pedal said mercy to Jesus. <laughs> I'm just looking at what Blair got there, and I'm just laughing to myself, Blair. Just be careful, there's kids watching. <laughs> Here we have uh, Canada Games. It was Emmanuel Dole looking to go through the wall. Thanks, Julie, for updating the score. Blair, over there we have again, we have nice ball by Mitchell Burry and again taken by Evan Knight on to Ryan Dunphy. Dunphy, the ball comes off a 22, Josh Power and back to Dunphy and it goes out of touch with a throw in being awarded to CBS Strikers. 
This is a big contest with a lot on the line for the strikers, a lot on the line for their season. This will put them into a tie for a second place with two other teams, Mel Pearl and the Feeling. <laughs> CBS had 17 points as of today, and here we have Golding putting the ball back. And Felix and Mel Pearl had 20. The ball's been pushed outside to Hako. The ball's been pushed again by Evan Knight. Knight looking to go long, and the ball's been taken by a hand hand taken by Philly. Philly has been running a lot in this game as well. Philly and Emmanuel Dolo, Canada Games have played a very good. A very good solid game and and uh, in all fairness to CBS it's not a style that you really want the defensive they could come back to haunt you but they haven't allowed any quality chances to the game since they took the lead again we have 84 minutes have gone by. You are tuning into Gorecast, live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mel Pearl, where we have a CBS Strikers FC leading the Newfoundland Labrador Canada Games with five minutes left in regulation time. I got burned here by me afterwards, so if Burn got no heaven, not busy, Burn Pike from Marystown. I don't know where he's from. He's from all over the province, I think. But anyway, he's here hoping to get, he can go for a coffee with me. I'm froze. I don't know. July comes. You would expect that you can go to a game. And uh, here I am with a nerdy jacket on me. I just brought that along. The one I had in Nunavik when I was there at the Arctic College. And uh, here I am. Uh, Taking that out of my bag and I'm wearing it here this evening and I'm all stuffed up. Here we have the ball again been cleared by Dunphy Dunphy to Evan Knight. Evan Knight moves the ball down the field. Here we have, I'm going to give you, wait, no, wait, no. <laughs> Ball's been taken by Evan Knight over to Jacob Grant. Here we can have some of the fans with the blankets and that on. Look, just look. here we heard for the July the 12th, it would quilt some blankets on. And we have Mr. Gary Forsyth just sitting to the opposite of me there. Uh, yeah, he's waving away, and I. There he goes, huh? There. <laughs> He's trying to wave to me anyway. The folks, the play is, again, is uh, CBS looking just to kick the ball along. The ball's been taken by Mitchell Burry outside to CBS. The ball goes off of Mitchell Burry with a corner kick been awarded to. No. By the strikers, it's a corner kick. Hello, Matt Breen. Welcome to Gorecast. Live streaming from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where you are watching Molson Challenge Cup play, where the CBS strikers currently lead the uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Canada Games team by a score of 2-1. to one. Here we have corner kick. The ball is intercepted by Emmanuel Dolo. We are down, we are getting down to critical time. Less than three minutes on this on the clock. If I can get the clock here, here's the clock. 87.55 have gone by with a score of two to one for CBS Trakers. Here we 
we have Barry, Barry to Carter. Carter to Philly, Philly to Emmanuel. Oops, so. Oh. I just, I know, I understand that the teams had to play the teams, uh, the Canada games hurt is all. I just hope that the games players don't get anyone hurt so that they won't be short when they go, you know. But when you're playing in, when you're playing in the senior league, obviously there's a physical element and teams are, oh, a man is taken down rather harsh, see. I would think it may be a yellow card on the play. Yes, there's a yellow card. That's the first yellow card. Yeah. The senior teams are playing to get into the playoffs, so, you know, uh, that's... That's the issue I see with the Canada games playing in the men's. You don't want them to get hurt. Anyway, we have 89 minutes have gone by where we have a free shot being or a free kick award of the game. Ball put in deep inside where it's a John Fee to the outside. Oh, and here we have Hockle. Sam Hockle scoring the goal. Hocko moved up on the play. It's Hocko. Hey, uh, where have you seen this? Where the goalie moved up on the play, and Sam Hockle's got his head on the ball off a corner kick from Dunphy, and it's the game team have tied the score here in the, at the Gusha Complex by two at two. It's remarkable. It's a Totally remarkable here where the CBS went in a defensive shell and at the 89 minute mark it was the goals keeper for the for the Gennard of the games who moved up on the play got his head on the ball and he scored a tying goal and then if the score remains two to two these two points can come back to hunt the CBS strikers before this season is over. Here we have Jacob Grant moving inside deep to the left. And he's been taken down. It's been an incredible finish here by the Canada Games. They didn't give up. They fell to it by a score of two to one. CBS played very, very strong defensively and uh, they got the one chance late into the contest. And here the ball has been taken inside again and it goes off the head of Hurry Carter out. And here we are, 90 minutes have gone by and we are on to referees time where you are listening to Gorecast live Streaming from the Kushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where the score is after 90 minutes of play, two to two between the games team and the CBS Strikers. Hello, Jonathan Edwards. Hello, Betsini and Howard. And hello, Ron Lane. You have tuned into Gorkas, where today it's been a bit of a remarkable finish by the Canada Games tying the contest at the 89 minute mark and the goal scorer for the games was none other than their goalkeeper Sam Hocko who had moved up on a corner kick and he scored uh, from a hitter that beat the goalie. Well now here we have these strikers moving in again. Hello Kendall, thank you so much for your compliments and complimentary remarks. Hello, Sherry. You are tuning into Gorecast, where 90 minutes of play have gone by here at the Kushu Complex in Mount Pearl. We are on referees' time, where you're watching Molson Challenge Cup play, and the Canada Games have tied the score with a goal coming at the 89-minute mark by their goalkeeper, Sam Hocko. Quite the finish, quite the excitement for the games. Here we have the CBS Strikers going in for their last opportunity of the contest. Was it or was it the last opportunity? Again, we have Emmanuel Dolo pushing for the ball. 
And so are the strikers. They are tenaciously wanting that ball. And the referee has called the play and the ball has been awarded to the Canada Games. Hello, Ian Gamba. Good, eh? Probably all. I'll play back. They give up their whole end. Right. Hello, Phil Malloy. Thanks, Blair. Thank you so much, Blair. I really enjoyed the game. Thank you, Loyal. Great for you joining in there, Loyal. Great way to follow the league. I'll be doing the two games the weekend, folks. I'll give that in my wrap-up. I'll be doing the two games. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Jolie. I'll do a quick wrap-up because it's it's rather cold here right now. Hello, Hillary. Thanks, Pat and Sarah there. Thank you, folks, for joining into Gorecast. It's been quite an evening here. It, when I came, the temperature must have been in uh, the late teens, and it fell off. I don't know. Thanks, Lynn. Anyway, uh, quite the game, quite the finish. And uh, maybe, maybe two points that will come back to haunt CBS. Anyway, I'll give a wrap-up, try to think it through. I haven't written it down. The opening goal of the contest came at the 11-minute mark for the CBS strikers, scored by Daniel, Daniel Quinn. Nice goal. It was tied up. The contest was tied up at the 19-minute mark by a beautiful shot. They set up a nice assist by Gary McEwen and a beautiful shot by Emmanuel Dolo. In the second half, CBS came out looking for the win, looking for the three points, and they went ahead by uh, by two to one on a goal by Tony Pomeroy. This looked like to be the winning goal, but at the 67 minute mark from there onward, the strikers went back into a defensive shell. When they went back into the shell, they all they did was clear the ball, looking for the long ball, hoping that that their striker, be it Pomeroy or Madison, would get a breakaway. But the game team played rather well, and something happened that I don't know if I've seen this happen. I don't know. I recall in uh, where a goalie moved up. It was at the 89-minute mark where a corner kick was awarded to the Canada Games. Dunphy took, Ryan Dunphy took the corner kick, put the ball nice inside of the box, and it was Sam Hockle, the goalkeeper for the Canada Games, who moved up on the play. The ball came back to Sam Hockle. Hockle got his head on the ball, and he beat the goalie, beat the CBS goalie, tying the game at the 89-minute mark. The thing is that I look at is the two the two points, the loss, it's a tie, a tie goes in the record book as one point, but the, the, the one point now allows uh, CBS to go up by a point to 18 points, where now Mount Pearl and Felians are both ahead of them by, by two points. So this two point that the, uh, CBS gave up and allowed the the keeper to score late into the game, I think could very, very well haunt the Canada game. But it was, it was very, it was very exciting. Anyway, that's it. And I thank you for tuning in to Gordcast here this evening from the Gushu Complex in Mount Pearl, where the final score was two to two. This weekend, 
the Laurentians are in on the Avalon. On Saturday evening, they play the CBS Strikers in Topsail at 7 o'clock. While on Sunday, the Laurentians will play Felians at King George the Fifth Field at 1 o'clock. I will gore cast both of those games live stream. And thank you for tuning in. And have a nice week. And we'll see you on Saturday evening. Thank you so much.